This lesson is about the paint method and the graphics object that's passed to it. Every component in Java has a paint method that it uses to draw itself into the window. That goes for push buttons, pull down menus, text entry windows, and of course, canvas objects. Each one of these is a component and each one draws itself on a window so it has a paint method because that's how the system requests that a component display itself. Let's take a simple example that draws a square in the middle of a window. This is a canvas class named Square. It's just like the pink canvas class in the previous lesson, except a paint method has been added. And inside the paint method, there is a call to a method named FillRect. The paint method is declared as void, which means it doesn't return a value. And it's declared as public, so it can be accessed from outside. It also has a graphics object passed to it as an argument. Now you can call this graphics object anything you like inside the paint method, but it's sort of a tradition to call it G because it's a short name and the graphics object is usually used a lot inside the paint method. Anyway, here's what happens. A canvas object, in this case an object of the square class, is created and added to the frame. The constructor of the square object sets its size to 200 by 200, so the frame object creates a window making a space that is 200 by 200. Then it creates a graphics object and calls the paint method of the square object and passes the address of the graphics object to it. Included inside the graphics object is the window to which the graphics object is to draw things. So here's the paint method with a graphics object. Now, that's all it needs. The window information is stored inside the graphics object, so all that needs to happen are some calls to methods of the graphic object to paint things on that window. This example fills a square region in the middle of the window. The first two numbers passed to fill rect are the x and y coordinates of the square inside the window. It's 50 pixels over from the left and 50 pixels down from the top. The other two numbers are the height and width of the region to be filled. It looks like this. The dimensions were chosen so the filled area would be in the center of the window. There are a couple of important things to notice here. Changing the size of the window causes the window to be automatically cleared to the preset background color. In this case, it's pink. At which point, another call is made to paint for the window to be drawn again. This paint method can be called again and again and again. Every time the window needs to be displayed for any reason, another call is made to paint. This program doesn't pay any attention to the window size, so it draws the same square in the same location. Another thing you want to make note of is the color. The graphics object does all of its painting in one color, and the default color is black, but you can change that. Let me show you. This canvas is the same as the previous one, except for the call to set color. The call is made right before the square is filled. At this point, everything drawn by the graphics object will be blue. There. Everything's the same except the color. Now if you want to draw in more than one color, you have to set the color value inside the graphics object again. This draws another square inside the first one, but sets the color to yellow before it does it. It looks like this.
You can use all the colors you like. The graphics object really doesn't mind having its color changed over and over again. One important thing to learn from this example is that if you want something to be on top, draw it last. Everything you draw on the window goes right on top of whatever else is already there. Now in this lesson I lied to you a little bit. In the next lesson I'll confess and tell you what I lied about.